strength. We all need it. We all want more of it. But how do we get it? Trust in God is the best way to gain strength. Trust in God is our seventh natural law in our acronym STRENGTH. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health for your navel, and marrow for your bones. In this world of uncertainty, there is one thing we can still be certain of. That is trust in God. We can trust God, and we can trust his word. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The same creative power that spoke creation into existence is the same power that's in God's Word. This power is behind every promise. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says this, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Did you know God's word is like an instruction and repair manual? The psalmist says, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Think about it. God is the one who created us. So it makes sense that we go to him with all our burdens and cares, everything that is happening in this body of ours. It only makes sense that he knows best how to restore us to our original state. You know, there's a lot of stress worldwide right now, and stress weakens our immune system. Stress throws off the homeostasis of the body, and it's a causative, it's a causative factor for indigestion. And remember, the needs of the cell? So if the needs of the cell aren't being met, and indigestion, we can't meet the needs of the cell, so we can't make good blood. So what happens when we're stressed? The blood vessels are restricted or constricted, and the blood flow ceases to have good circulation. So when that happens, of course, one of the things is that the, the system and the organs don't get the oxygen that it needs to work effectively. When stressed, our brain also gives off toxic hormones, and this affects the metabolism of every cell. These toxic hormones are produced when we're experiencing fear, anger, frustration, hate, envy, and guilt. Since stress affects our health so much, it is best that we trust God at his word. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him because he careth for you. And Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 says this, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Remember, Disease is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that result due to the violation of the laws of health. In case of disease, ascertain the cause, correct wrong habits, change unhealthful conditions, and then assist nature in her efforts to expel impurity and reestablish right conditions in the system. Sin is also a disease. It destroys the heart and it leads to death. Remember when Jesus healed, he said, go and sin no more. 
And he, and he even said, your sins be forgiven thee. We can thank God and praise him because we don't need to have this guilt and this sin hanging over us for he gave his life for us. And he says in 1 John 1, 9, if ye confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And Romans 6, 22 and 23 says this, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God created us strong, healthy, happy, and with a free will. Sin brought in sickness, sorrow, fear, distrust, and death. Satan desires to destroy us and deceive us. He wants to steal our relationship with Jesus and ultimately destroy us. God desires to restore us, to bring us back to our original state, not by force, but by choice. The choice is ours. The power is God's. John 17.3 says this, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And John 1.12 says this, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When we realize the beauty of salvation and we accept this gift and we truly surrender our heart and invite him in to work in and through us, we will have power to have victory, victory over sin. And we will be able, by God's grace, to keep his moral and health laws. John 10.10 10 says this, I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. How can we trust in God? We can start by opening up his word, by spending time in devotion, devoting time to him. Morning and evening, prayerfully open God's word. Ask for the Holy Spirit to teach you and to lead you. Have an attitude of gratitude, cheerfulness, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, the Bible says. Give to God all your fears, all your burdens, all your sorrows. Thank him for all the blessings, the gifts that he bestows, for creation around us, the beauty he has given us. And as you do this, you will draw closer to him. And your trust, your faith will grow. God says he has given all of us a measure of faith. What we do with it is up to us. We reap what we sow, so why not? Sow habits for good health and reap an abundant life. Join me next time for more Tiny Bites for Strength.